Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It is my typical practice to preach based on the assigned lessons for the day, and we had some great ones today. Uh, but this is a practice, while I find quite helpful, is certainly not mandatory. And from time to time, one is called uh, to break their regular practice, and today is one of those days. The council asked if we could do a worship service, which was basically a hymn theme, which we've been doing, and it is a, a really good idea and a fun idea. However, if you just think about those readings we just had, none of them really talk much about singing or music, do they? So I have selected a free text for the sermon, and that is Colossians 3.16, which reads, Let the word of God dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Here ends the reading of our text. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Music and singing is found all the way through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. The first explicit reference is in Genesis 4.21, where we read that there was a man named Jubal. Jubal is called the father of, those, of all those who play the harp and flute. In this case, of course, father does not mean biological father, but it means something more like founder. And he was basically a world-famous musician. There is your first superstar uh, singer. And people around the world tried to copy him. The first hint of a song is actually before Jubal. The words are well known. And they're from Genesis chapter 3, 14 through 19, where we receive the very first promise of the Messiah. That promise is set in a poetry format. In other words, they are written like song lyrics. That it might have been sung is not too big a stretch. Not only are songs simply more memorable, but many of the prophets in the Bible uh, actually sang their prophecies. The songs were, and indeed still are, used as songs. For example, we use Isaiah 12, 5 through 6, in our service of prayer and preaching. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this made, be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitants of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. You know, that's in that uh, prayer and preaching. Also, we have the Nuke de Minas, the Song of Simeon, and the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, and many others. So these things are set with the idea that people would sing them. We are also told in Job that the angels were singing as God created the heavens and the earth. So right from the beginning, heaven and earth had been singing, singing the word of God, singing about our need for a savior and about the great work of Jesus. We also find in Revelation that the singing continues in heaven. Heaven is a place of song. It is no surprise then that our earthly worship service is also a place of music, a place of song. We join heaven when we sing the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Through them, God encourages us, comforts us, instructs us, and yes, also admonishes us. The prophet Isaiah tells us that the second coming will be a time of song. He wrote, Your dead shall live, their bodies shall rise, 
You who dwell in the dust, awake and sing for joy, for your dew is a dew of life, and the earth will give birth to the dead. It is no surprise, then, that Martin Luther held singing and music in general in such high regard. He once wrote, I truly desire that all Christians would love and regard as worthy the lovely gift of music, which is a precious, worthy, and costly treasure given to mankind by God. He goes on, he says, The riches of music are so excellent and so precious that words fail me whenever I attempt to discuss and describe them. In Summa, next to the word of God, the noble art of music is the greatest treasure in the world. It controls our thoughts, minds, hearts, and spirits. At least in the Lutheran church, we have followed Luther's suggestion. Our Lord Jesus sang as well. Not only would we know that based on the uh, time he lived and the culture he lived in, but St. Mark tells us that after Jesus had instituted the Lord's Supper, they sang a hymn, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives. So there's Jesus even singing. In the Old Testament, our Lord actually had full-time musicians and singers as part of the worship service. In the Bible, we also have the names of any number of singers and musicians. People like, you'll have to bear me, with me with these because this is a bunch of Old Testament names, but Chenania, Heman, Jeduthun, Shemaiah, Azrael, uh, Milalai, Gilalai, Mai, Nathaniel, Judah, and Hanani. And we certainly should not overlook King David, who I have no trouble pronouncing his name, and uh, King Solomon, both who which were singers and songwriters. But this is only a partial list, and a very partial list. Think about that. Isn't that amazing that so many singers and musicians received positive mention in the Bible? That in itself should teach us of the blessings that we receive through music and song. As our text indicated, song remained an important part of the apostolic church's life. So Paul and Silas were able to comfort and encourage themselves while they were in prison by praying and singing hymns to God. The text goes on to say that the very music of the church was also a witness to the other uh, prisoners as well as to the guards. And this, the church was not simply reflecting contemporary trends because, of course, like us, people in Rome sang, but they were actually being faithful to the command of God. Jeremiah wrote, Thus says the Lord, God speaking now, Sing aloud. Here's the command to sing. Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and rise shout and raise shouts for the chief of the nation. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. How wonderful it is that we are commanded by God to sing about our wonderful salvation, something we love to do. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. So today we sing. We sing for our Savior. We sing of God's grace. We sing of God's mercy. We sing with joy in our hearts. May the songs of the church, as they have in countless generations past, bring you comfort, encouragement, hope, peace, and so many other great blessings, not only today, but throughout the weeks, months and years ahead until we join in that great song on the last day. Amen. May the peace of God which passes human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.